can I ask you one quick question? I've been really thinking about a bunch. Knowing Jerry and how humble and how like a student of music he was and he really valued the music over everything else. How do you think he would feel about all these guitar players that are every state has a dead cover band? <laughs> Everybody's playing Jerry somewhere. In the cosmic Jerry looking down on us. How do you think that makes, you know, like like what do you think he thinks about all of that? I think about this quite often. That's a hell of a good question. Um, I have to just fantasize that because I, I, by knowing him, I think he would really like it that yeah, people are picking up and that he's influencing people in a good way. He's not teaching them how to yeah. steal cars or doing mm -hmm. bad boogie with, you know, Facebook steal photos whatever. from a brothel, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like some, like some drummers. That's not you know, too what's, bad. You know what's interesting about, <laughs> about his playing that I actually thought about very recently. Jerry Garcia exists before the concept of guitar hero. So yeah. it was a certain muscularity that that guitar heroism picked up mm -hmm. in 70s, mid 70s, late 70s, early 80s was where I yeah, feel like yeah. there was a certain atomic bomb kind of playing on the like guitar. Pete Townsend kind of playing. Yeah, yeah. And, and Hendrix. And yeah, like nice. Hendrix, right? Well, you can even look yeah. at Hendrix and that was... Although, strangely enough, there's some revisionist history on Hendrix because Hendrix was a fairly soft player. He was just loud. Mm. Mm. Eddie Kramer, who was Hendrix's mm. producer, was in the studio across from me one time and was playing me the solo tracks from Band of Gypsies. Which is the best thing. Ever. We all have it wrong. We all, every guitar player has it wrong. It ain't that crunchy. It's not that mm. distorted. It's actually mm. pretty glassy. It's just loud, but it's his control of it that's, that's pushing. It's happened. Yeah, And so I think what people are going back to about Jerry's playing is it's pre high energy guitar ripping and it's more subtle and nuanced and it's a little more like swimming yeah. than it is cigarette boats, you know, yeah. 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 Or, and it is scuba diving, you know, I can mm. understand the correlation. And so yeah. for me, I didn't realize it until maybe early this morning when I was thinking about this podcast, but wow. Mm. Before guitar playing got so acrobatic, and I think all us guitar players who have moved all the way through, turn it up, crank it, put a tube screamer on it, let it rip, there is something, there's an elegance that we never quite caught on the guitar that we're now super curious about finding this, this elegance on the guitar. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's a feminine, a feminine thing. I've, man, after my brother died, I mean, you know, just the slew of deaths, but I found Jerry's guitar like remarkably healing. It's voice too, but his guitar, I remember I was just playing stuff around the house and I would just kind of stop wherever I was in the room and it would just like fix stuff in me. Mm -hmm. And it's that feminine <laughs> side, man. I just was like, I guess I just had to get older to really yeah. well, understand the layered depth of what he yeah, some he things, able to just Some things you got to hear all the rest first to get. Uh, and, yeah, they got to get out of the way. And, and, you have to and get out of the way. Right. Harry's not doing this. He's not doing. No. I think yeah. it's more like this. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. happened to have to be played this way. But it wasn't. It was. It was piano mm -hmm. like this way to me. You know. And when it did come out, it was crying that he was let. When you hear those morning dues, mm -hmm. oh, you know, yeah. and it's just like. Did, oh, just, did you guys uh, also listen to the parts where he is just playing by himself? Yes. And he's just, yes. and they were never long enough, but I, I could always hear on those parts after the band had jammed and done everything. It, was, it would be just him. Maybe Phil was still there pedaling or whatever. Um, I would hear the most true Jerry in those moments. I'd hear the most intimate. The, I would really hear his personality yeah. in that time when there wasn't drums going in there. It was just so amazing. And you could hear him kind of laments in his playing. He has great, a little, uh, great little pathos. He has a teeny great bit of pathos great. in there when he's playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it's, it, it like hints at the blues, but it's not the blues. Right. Yes. It's, a, it's you know? exactly it. I, that's exactly well, it. I mean, like, your key blues. You can listen yeah. to a Sing Me Back Home and it'll stop you in your tracks and you're just like, I, I mean, the, the way that, that he, made me go. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> just, but, and you know what's so beautiful to see too is when you watch like after a song or after, like he may glance over his glasses at you and you, he kind of has like a, wow, that was something. Like there was always mm -hmm. this beautiful childish humility to him too where mm -hmm. it was like, mm -hmm. we just pulled something pretty amazing off. 
And it right, was just to right. see you all kind of like go, yep, again, we still got it. <laughs> yeah. It's such a magical thing, you know, and thank you for all of that. John, when you started to, uh, you know, dive as deep as you did into the dead, did you get into like watching Jerry interviews and listening to him like kind of as, as a fan or as a, like, just wanting to learn more about Garcia? Like, did you? Um, a little bit. I, I knew though that I was coming from a, a different world. Like I was already coming from a different universe. So mm -hmm. to me, everything you think I would have gotten from an interview, I got from every single note that he was playing. And I can tell you why. So once you understand the arrangements, so I was hot to learn the arrangements so that I could understand the relativity of what made his playing different on any given night. Mm -hmm. Once I can do that and I can lock into this, like this control group. Okay. Here's how China cat sunflower goes, right? Here's how it goes. Hearing all of the different permutations of his playing on top of it. I mean, down to the note for yeah. me was like hearing his theory about the world or his philosophy on life through playing. And I still get that. And I, I've always felt like I could hear the records Jerry was listening to either in between tours or backstage on a record player. Wow. It would always make its way in. So you mm -hmm. can pick up little mm -hmm. things and go, oh, he, look what he was listening to. Like, and I can feel it sometimes. Like, I can sometimes, like, Billy, you guys used to do a song called Next Time You See Me. Yeah, I love that tune. It's fun, and, too. And, and, and I could tell, like, oh, he's having a Freddie King moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Jerry's having a Freddie King, like blues moment. And then you could hear these other things and go, oh, okay. So, so once you understand how the arrangement goes, and once you understand the baseline of, not only in the baseline of the music, but BASE line as yep. to what the song is, you can understand that people's souls live in the variances between their performances. So what made it different that night? What made it... And that to me is how I really picked up the personality of this person just through playing, right? Like that's my only in right. um, is through the music. And it's, I, it still happens. I can still hear him, this person I don't know who's left this archeological artifact through their choices. Mm. Right, Billy? Like, yeah, I am, I'm listening, man. Choice. You're right. So a man leaves his fingerprint via his, choices and if you um, already know how china cat sunflower goes then you can gauge the the soul of a person in these spaces between what they normally do and what they did that time mm. right right there right, between true. those two little capacitors mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. someone's little soul fingerprint and that yeah, to me yeah. i'm obsessed with hearing and i go oh hello sir yeah uh -huh. i can sort of do that because i understand the guitar really well. I'm not a full, fully rounded musicologist. I'm really not. But I will say that I, I do understand the guitar from any direction, up, down, left, right, 360. Like I could play the guitar with my wrong hand upside down. So that I understand. Right. So therefore, someone else has the same instrument from long ago. And unfortunately, they can't be with us to instruct me. Oh, right. These two guitars are the same. Mm -hmm. Right. Like his guitar, my guitar, same design, same number of frets, same string tension. There is where you can meet someone in the, mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. distance mm -hmm. between those two things. Mm -hmm. That's the shape of someone's not their face, but it's the shape of the whole thing. Behind. Yeah. 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 No, I get that. That's true. His personality was so different from show to show in that wasn't so different, but the song that, that he would choose would be a lot of it. The set choices were really important, but songs he felt like playing that night. Some nights he wouldn't wouldn't do a certain song for whatever reason. One of his favorite things I liked the most is if the crowd was really rowdy, which was pretty often, uh, he'd end with a broke down palace as the, as the uh, and I just, I mean, he said, why, why send people out there all excited and crazy to I mean, that way all night? Why not have them a nice little slide in there? Mm -hmm. 